Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED Summer Four Four. So, today, guys, we'll do a quick Afcon reaction. I don't have a lot of time, guys. We'll be starting a stream around eight minutes, so I'm gonna get this around five to six minutes ish, or maybe even a little bit more. Anyways, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. So, we're gonna start with the first going to carry is Molly One Ivory Coast Two. I don't know how Ivory Coast did this because this Ivory Coast thing, it just feels like it's like a miracle. Like these guys are just gonna keep doing this, and because like, logically speaking, they shouldn't have won this game. But that's the beauty of football, is that logic goes out the window. And this game, logic doesn't explain what happened. So let me just give a quick rundown what happened in the game. So Mali steps up, they have a penalty inside the box. Terrible challenger, Cassano. And I believe, I, think, I forgot who won the penalty. A Malian player won the penalty. And then Adama Traor takes the penalty, goes to keeper's right, and Fofana saves it. And then Cassano does another stupid challenge takes him down inside the box, and he gets a second yellow. I mean, it was rightfully so. And you can see that this uh, this uh, Ivory, it's going to be difficult for Ivory Coast now because they have to, now they're down at 10 men. They have to turn this, they have to, they're lucky that they're not even losing. And then Molly just scored it. Molly had a really good shot from the 50th minute, really good effort on target, Um, you know, and they were just not good, man. You could see how good this Molly team was in terms of pressing. They really did press well as a unit, and you have to give them that credit. But obviously the final third wasn't good enough. And the second half, man, they kept pushing, they kept pushing, and then they finally scored a wonderful solo goal from Dorgalis at the 71st minute. And I was thinking to myself, okay, are they really in this? Finally, Ivory Coast started to come alive with the substitutions. You have to give credit to um, Emerson Faye bringing on um, Singo, who basically played as a center back. He was basically a makeshift center back because obviously Cosona was suspended. You know, he sacrificed uh, Pepe in the process. Brought Sebastian Haller at halftime, Willie Boley at halftime. And um, Diakata and Indingra. Those two changes really made the difference, especially Diakata and Indingra. And then what a pass that was. What a pass that was um, to equalize. Great, great assist there. Indingra scores in the 90th minute of the game to draw a level. Great, great effort from outside the box. And then extra time, Ivory Coast hit the post, I believe, right there. I think Holler hit the post. That was a great chance there. Um, I think Ivory, uh, there was nearly an own goal there for um, I Mali there. Um, if I remember, uh, Ivory Coast there, but I believe there was a terrible clearance, I believe, in the second half. And then, obviously, man, the decisive moment came when Diakate comes off the bench, scores a nice set-piece goal to make it 2-1 to Ivory Coast. And in the process, he was already in a yellow card, got a second yellow, and got sent off. So, commiserations, Diakate obviously will not be available for the final. I mean, they're sorry, the semifinal. Kosono will also not be available for semifinal as well. So, Ivory Coast, man, I don't know how they keep doing this, but this team is just unbelievable. This team just have this never give up attitude. You have to give them a ton of credit. And Emerson Faye, man, once again, man, got his tactics spot on, made the substitutions. And this Ivory Coast team, like I said, guys, the players they could bring off the bench is unbelievable. And I think that's one key thing that they have a lot of other teams don't have is squad depth. Depth is very key. Bring it off Holler. Bring it on Diakata. Bring it on Dingra. This is ridiculous, you know? So it'll be interesting to see how Ivory Coast does in the semifinal. Of course, we'll be playing against Zero Congo. I believe one of the Mali players got uh, got a red card for the fight in the end. There was a violent conduct thing in the end. And so, yeah, man, shout out to Ivory Coast. They got the job done. They're through to the semifinals. Moving on to the next game we got here. It is uh, Cape Verde nil, South Africa nil. Um, let me just say this right now, guys. This was a very underwhelming game. Now, there was a lot of chances, especially towards the end, especially in extra time and like late in the end, but for the most part, this game, there wasn't really a whole lot of qualityness, you know, and it was a very meh game, you know, um, and then obviously huge, huge, I want to talk about, I'm going to mainly talk about the extra time, the second half and the 90th, the extra time, okay, why is my thing taking so long to load, anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and continue talking, I'm, I need to wrap this up soon, so, yeah, basically, man, um, it was interesting with Cape Verde, because they were taking off their place players, like Ryan Mendez was getting taken off, uh, who else was getting taken off, I think, um, who else got taken off, uh, Rodriguez was taken off, and they actually brought Ben uh, Bebe off the bench, and we'll get to Ben Bebe in a bit. So yeah, as you can see the first half, guys. First half, we didn't really have a whole lot of nothing. Both teams really struggled to find uh, goal scoring opportunities, as you can see right here. But the second half, man, Cape Verde started to come alive, and that double save right there at the very end was huge. Tavares with a huge, huge, huge Williams was there with a huge, huge save there in the end to deny Tavares. And for South Africa, man, they didn't really create a whole lot in the second half. They were pretty uh, pretty poor, I would say, an extra time, man. South Africa almost scored there. Very, very good double save there from the Cape Verde goalkeeper, Rosano. Really, really good save in the second half, extra time. You know, like I said, both teams are just going for penalties at this point. I would say South Africa were the better team in the second half, 
Um, though in extra time, I would probably say. And came right away the better team in, in the um, second half. But yeah, man, it was just a really bad match. Taking off Ryan Mendes, taking off Rodriguez. Because I believe Ryan Mendes was the guy that scored the penalty against Martinia. Uh, then uh, K. Birdie. This is the first time they ever gone to penalty shootouts. And guys, that Bebe guy is an absolute disgrace. He was terrible on today. I'm sorry. He was shooting from long distance so many times. It was just so stupid. Like, just make sure, make your shot go on target. Don't just shoot just for the sake of shooting. You know, and I, when I saw him take a penalty, I was really worried. I was like, okay. I was hoping he would score, but I would. I was. I, I was like, okay, he might actually miss. And oh my god, he missed. He missed. I'm gonna say, man, both keepers came up clutch for their penalties. Um, especially Williams. Williams was amazing in the penalties. And Cape Verde, man, those penalties they took were so abysmal. I'm sorry, they went all three the same side. Abysmal disgrace. But it, it makes sense though. This is the first time Cape Verde have ever competed in a penalty shootout in their history. So it was all. It's going to be very difficult for them to win. Obviously, South Africa have been in this position before. They've played in penalty shootouts before, so I'm not too surprised. And yeah, for South Africa, man, Williams, man, uh, made those crucial saves, the, those penalty saves. And yeah, for Cape Verde, man, they could have, sh they should have finished the game off. That Tavares chance was the chance they missed because once it got into extra time, you could see that the South Africa team had the momentum. They made all their subs very late on, and they keep, did it for extra time purpose. Whereas Cape Verde, they were taking off some of their best players, like. Ryan Mendes was taken off, Rodriguez, like Montero, like it's just really weird, man. I, I'm really, really concerned with uh, Cape Verde, their decision, uh, their substitutions. But yeah, man, it is what it is in South Africa, man. You know, they move on to the semifinals for the first time since 2000. And unfortunately, with these guys, we're not going to have a new AFCON winner. So all the teams left have won the AFCON before, respectively. So our two semifinals are Nigeria versus South Africa, rematch of the 2019 quarterfinals, and the Ivory Coast versus. Uh, uh, DR Congo, which I believe happened in 2017. So I hope you guys did enjoy this quick little review. Like, so guys, join me for the stream. That'll be starting in a few minutes. And yeah, please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.